Hi, guys, and welcome to No Culty Vibes. If you don't know me, my name is Cassie Marie. I am an ex-cult hopper turned crazy cult researcher turned artist and content creator, and I make a lot of content about cults, undue influence, the connection between cults, celebrities, pop culture, and also on art as a great tool to heal from cults through your deconstruction. I know that's a lot. It's It's been a crazy journey. It's a crazy story. But today I am sharing this video with you about the YouTube family, the YouTube family channel called Eight Passengers and the mother of that channel, Ruby Frankie and her recent arrest. If you like all things cults and pop culture and trending topics, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see more culty content. If you're listening on the podcast and you want to see my face, head on over to YouTube, search No Culty Vibes on YouTube and watch me there. If you're watching my face on YouTube and you're busy or maybe you're driving and you don't want to have it up, head on over to any podcast platform and search No Culty Vibes there and you can listen instead of watch. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram at the.cassiemarie. So follow me all the places, hang out with me on social media, comment. I love chatting with you guys about all the different topics in different videos, or just leave a comment down below if you have questions. And I always, I always just love hearing your thoughts on the different topics that we discuss. When I first made a TikTok about Ruby Frankie's arrest, I did not realize how much misinformation and rumors and gossip there were about this all over the internet. Usually when I research a topic, I stick to certain sources and everything usually lines up and says a lot of the same things anyway. And that was just not the case with this topic and situation. A lot of people have jumped on this as a viral moment, which I like, I understand how this happens. This is a horrific and fascinating story. There's a lot of things I can say about that. However, there was so much going around that wasn't true. I misreported just a couple of things in the beginning. I made some TikToks immediately correcting what I misreported, but I wanted to do a video of the timeline of this particular situation and this arrest so that we can have all the facts in one place. I have something that I can reference looking back as well, and I can correct some of the misinformation that I shared and some of the misinformation that I see just going around. I do have another YouTube video that I did as a live video where I did the whole deep dive behind eight passengers and the Frankie family and how they got to where they are and all the cults that they were a part of and the culty connections every step of the way. So be sure to check that out as well. I will be mentioning a couple more cult crazy culty connections in this video too, but this is going to be mostly I mean, entirely focused around the current crime, the current charges, and why Ruby Frankie and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, got arrested. I did get most of this information from a video that Jordan and McKay did on YouTube. They have been covering Eight Passengers and Ruby Frankie for a really long time, for a number of years. They have a lot of back catalog on this family. So if you want like the deep, deep dive, go ahead and go to their YouTube page. Like I said, it's Jordan and McKay. They have a playlist called Eight Passengers and they have a lot of videos on on this as well as videos of the arrest and the timeline and they are ex-Mormon so they share a lot of this stuff from a Mormon perspective from an Exmo perspective and they do really amazing work and they cite their sources which is why I use them as a trusted source a lot of this I also got from news outlets that have verified certain things and I have verified and cross-checked these things as well. And I suggest that you do the same as you're consuming content about this family, because like I said, there's a lot of rumors out there and things are getting really jumbled and confusing. Also, please take care when watching or listening to this comment. Let this serve as the trigger warning. There are um, topics of child abuse and prolonged child abuse and some of the things that have happened are really terrible. So you know what's best for you. If you need to pause this and go through this slowly, please take care. Or if you just need to skip this and look or listen to some other content, that's totally good with me. You do whatever is good for you. 
Just a really quick rundown for you. If you don't know what I'm talking about or you're wondering why I'm covering this since I talk about cults and pop culture and trending topics. The Frankie family were YouTubers and they are also Mormon. So Ruby and Kevin Frankie are the parents and they started their YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, back in 2015. In the first year, they gained over 100,000 followers. And then in the year after that, they went from 100 to a million. And by the time their channel was entirely taken down in 2023, they had over 2.36 million followers on YouTube. A lot of their videos went viral because they had a lot of controversial parenting opinions and there were some things that happened that were just downright abusive, honestly, and people have been raising concerns about this family for many, many years on Reddit and apparently even in their neighborhood, which we'll get into. But like I said, I have a deep dive on the background story of eight passengers as well. If you want to go check that out. The other person involved in this is a woman named Jody Hildebrandt. Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie were business partners. And Jody Hildebrandt also started a life coaching um, cult essentially called connections that Ruby was a part of for many years. And they started working together and they started making YouTube videos together talking about parenting advice in this life coaching cult. So those are the important people. Let's dive into the timeline of the arrest, what led to it and just what happened. Oh, and Ruby Frankie and Kevin Frankie have six children. That's why their YouTube was called Eight Passengers. They have two adult children, Sherry Frankie, and I'm not going to say the name of the other one just because he's not as public. And I'm not going to use any of the names of the minor children, but they have four minor children that will be mentioned throughout this story. So what happened was at 10.50 a.m. on August 30th, a young child of Ruby and Kevin Frankie, who is either at or around 12 years old, escaped from Jody Hildebrandt's house through a window and went to a neighbor's house asking for food and water. The neighbors noticed that this child seemed emaciated and malnourished and could tell that they had been starving for a while. They also had duct tape around their extremities that seemed like they had been restrained. And they also had open wounds on their body on their body near where the restraints were. Because this was so shocking and concerning, the neighbors immediately called the police. They could tell from the state of the child that something was extremely wrong. So the police came and searched Jody Hildebrandt's home and found another child, Ruby Frankie and Kevin Frankie's youngest child, in Jody's home as well. Who, and she was in similar condition to the child that escaped to the neighbor's house. Ruby Frankie and Kevin Frankie were not in the home at the time. It was just the two children and Jody Hildebrandt that were found there. Ruby Frankie and Kevin Frankie's middle minor children were not found on the premises. So police issued a search warrant in Springville? Springfield in Springfield, Utah, where the Frankie home actually is. And a bunch of police went to the home to try to locate the other two children. There were several police that lined the streets of the Frankie home and they approached the home with guns. They had to break down the door to get in because nobody was home, but they did not find Ruby Frankie and Kevin Frankie's other children there. Um, later, I think Ruby and Kevin showed up to that house. We don't know if neighbors called them or if like the police called them or what happened, but nobody was at the home at the time. Ruby and Kevin came later and the other two minor children were located at a friend's house later and taken into DCFS custody. Their oldest daughter, Sherry, did post on August 30th that picture of the police outside her parents' home, and she just wrote finally on it when she posted to Instagram. So after all of the children were located and safe, the child that had climbed out the window and escaped to the neighbor's house was found to have some pretty bad wounds that needed immediate attention, and the um, probable cause affidavits said that those wounds were like likely lacerations from being tied up by a rope, 
which is just horrific and upsetting. And that child was immediately taken to the hospital. And then the, the youngest Frankie child actually refused medical care and medical attention for around four hours before she finally agreed to be checked out and was then taken to the hospital. Um, she wasn't refused medical attention by like paramedics or police or anything. The child herself refused to be looked after, taken care of, um, or given medical attention. But then she finally agreed and was taken to the hospital as well. But it was just several hours after the first child was taken there. At the hospital, they discovered that the youngest Frankie child was also malnourished. So Jody Hildebrandt was arrested because she was determined to be in direct care of the two children that were in her home. And they found gauze in a bathroom in Jody's home, indicating that she knew of the children's wounds and lacerations and condition and didn't take care of them. So they immediately arrested her and took her into custody. And then Ruby Frankie was also arrested and brought into custody because she had filmed a video in Jody's basement two days prior. And the basement is where they found one of the children. So that indicated that she was there very recently and knew her children were there and would have known the condition of her children. When she was given her charges, Jody Hildebrandt made a statement saying that those younger two children that were found in her home should never be allowed around other children. I don't know why she would say that. I don't know if she felt like that was a defense. I don't know if she felt like that was an excuse as to why they were like that or if she felt like she had to warn people about something. I don't know. But that was what she felt she needed to say when she was being arrested for these horrible crimes. Another one of the pieces of misinformation is the police audio that's going around. I've seen it on TikTok several times, but it really was making its rounds. And I guess there was an issue where the police scanner was picking up conversations. Not that there was an issue, but the conversation was about two separate cases that were kind of going on simultaneously. So a lot of people thought that there, that this case involved a panic room with a safe door and a code that had to be cracked and police busting in and these children being locked in a small panic room for God knows how long, but that was an entirely different case. The police scanner did that was something else entirely. The Frankie case had nothing to do with a panic room or a vault or anything of that nature. There was also a rumor going around that I had initially reported on that Kevin Frankie was also arrested or was questioned. And that was not true either. Kevin Frankie is, has not been arrested. He has retained an attorney who made a statement on his behalf to page six is a tabloid so I, I don't understand why this wasn't given to a new source but it said that he had no knowledge of the condition that the kids were in and that he was doing everything in his power to keep his children together and under his fatherly care I have opinions on that but this is not an in-depth opinion video this is just focusing on the facts. So Kevin has spoken out. He has made a statement. He has not been arrested. Other family members have spoken out as well. I had mentioned earlier in the video that Sherry Frankie had posted finally on her Instagram. She was posting on her Instagram stories throughout the day as well, saying that her family has been waiting for this to happen for a long time, that they have been trying to warn the government about this, and that she is really thrilled that something's finally being done and that the kids are safe. Apparently, Ruby Frankie also has three sisters that also make YouTube content or blogging content, um, similar family content. And they made a joint statement saying that they had also been hoping for this for a long time. And they are really glad that she's been arrested because it needed to happen. And they're also very glad that Jody Hildebrandt has been arrested because that needed to happen as well. Both women were charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. And these are felony charges. And the women are being held without bail, which is a really big deal. They were considered to be a risk to the safety of others and or themselves. And they are not being allowed any bail at all. And they are going to be held in a correctional facility until this all plays out. 
the first hearing for, I'm not sure exactly what the hearing is for, but the first hearing that we will get word of is happening on September 8th at 1.30. I don't know if this is just like an arraignment situation or if this kind of just starts the legal proceedings. Once I have more information on that, I will absolutely share it with you. I am going to see if I can watch the hearing. Um, but because this is so much viral attention, I don't know if they will be making it public or not. Allegedly, there will be a custody hearing for Kevin Frankie next week because all of the minor children have been taken into DCFS custody. So I'm assuming that they some things will need to happen in order for Kevin to have custody of all of his kids and keep them together. DCFS did say that they have investigated the Frankie family before. Allegedly, back in October of 2022, DCFS made a visit to the Frankie home. They said that the parents were uncooperative and they did not have a warrant at the time to search the house and they didn't have probable cause for a warrant or enough evidence or enough anything to get a warrant to search the house at the time. So nothing came of it. And then neighbors have started speaking out as well to different news sources, saying that they noticed that there were a lot of horrible things that the kids were going through. They pointed out some very specific things. And one of the neighbors said that she did contact DCFS back in late 2022. So those stories kind of match up. It seems that um Along with people on the internet, it seems like neighbors were also seeing some really horrible, concerning behavior and did report it to somebody. Some weird or interesting or culty connection things to note are that Warren Jeffs, the FLDS cult leader, was held at the same correctional facility that Ruby and Jody are being held at. And he was there for some time. And then the state's attorney for the first hearing that is scheduled on September 8th was also the state's attorney or prosecutor or worked on Warren Jeff's case as well. So this uh, attorney has had experience with a very horrific cult leader that did horrible things to children. So uh, maybe there will be some good insight or good knowledge or information going into this case that this attorney may have. A lot of people are also noticing the similarities and drawing conclusions between this case and the Lori Vallow case, the doomsday cult mom. Both of these moms did horrible things to their children. Obviously with Lori Vallow, it ended in a much worse situation and the children were not found alive. But it is interesting to note that both of these moms came from cults that were based in Mormonism and like the LDS cult, but each one were part of cults that were somehow even more extreme and more destructive and more dangerous than Mormonism and the cult of the LDS church. I do find it really hopeful and I really feel great about the fact that this did not end the same way as the Lori Vallow case. I definitely think the potential is there that it could have, um, whether that be accidentally or on purpose. I do think if it progressed further, that is possibly how this could have ended. I do find it inter interesting that with Lori Vallow, it was this doomsday cult Versus with Ruby Frankie, she was part of like this life coaching parenting tips cult. So doomsday cults often tend to be the most harmful, the most destructive, and also are most likely to end in the unaliving of someone. So those are just a couple of the differences to keep in mind. I will definitely be keeping an eye on this. Um, as soon as there are new updates or information, I will absolutely hop on and share those with you. And I will definitely be trying to stick to the facts, not just some of the rumors swirling around this case. And I will continue to be making the connections between the cults and the role that the cults and undue influence and coercive control and these terrible systems all played such a huge role in everything turning out this way. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you next time on 